But thank you, I appreciate it. And honestly, like, I'm happy there's so many people here. This is great. I'm glad there's a nice crowd here because I got some pretty big news recently. A couple of months ago, I was officially diagnosed with mild autism. Yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah. I didn't work for it, like, <laughs> I'll take it, but thank you. <laughs> exactly, for sure. That's the plan, dude. That's my that's my dating profile now, man. Like as soon as she and like I got the real one. I did it the Amish way. I didn't do TikTok. I went <laughs> I went to Valencia, man. It's the real thing. It's the real deal. Like she told me it was mild autism, and like I, at first when I, I got the diagnosis, I was a little bit surprised. But then I called my friends and family and realized I was the only one surprised. <laughs> Like, I told them it was mild autism, and they're like, mild? You know what I mean? That's not, a, that's not the answer I wanted, mom, you know? It's a little, it's, it's, it is, it's a trip, you know? Like, it's just, it's mild autism, right? Like, I barely made it under the line, but it works. And then they explained all the things that I missed during my life. They're like, are you sure it's mild autism? Because you eat the same thing for lunch every day. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, a PB&J is tasty, healthy, and a safe texture. Like, why, why would I eat anything else? You know what I mean? Why would I ever want anything else in this life? And now, look at that. Now they've explained it, and I've told my friends and family and everyone important to me. I'm trying to get around to telling other people. You know, I'm trying to live my truth, right? And uh, I've realized that usually when I tell people the diagnosis, I get one of, like, three responses. I was like, well, you don't look autistic. You don't, you don't really act autistic. You don't really seem autistic. That's because he'd never gone on a first date with me, okay? Like, ask me about airplanes, 90s comedians, or medieval torture methods, and see if I seem autistic then, all right? You're just not asking the right questions. That's what you're dealing with here. That's it. And look, we all know dating is tough, okay? Dating in LA especially is awful, but let me ask y'all this. How many times has a woman sent you a naked selfie, and your only response was to compliment how clean her room looked? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, 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 you look very nice. What I really like is how your red shirt slowly transitioned to pink in your closet back there. That's the good stuff right there. That's what I, they all walked in right as they got to, y'all missed like half of it. I promise the setup made sense. <laughs> oh, well, it's not there. At least they're not 10. I can deal with that. I can work with that. I can deal with that. And, like, thinking about my dating life, like, it makes sense. You know, there were signs that probably should have been diagnosed a while ago. But that's the things I grew up in Texas. Shout out to the guys with Cowboy Hats. Yeah. Hell yeah. And out in Texas, mental health is a government conspiracy. There's no other way to put it. They just sort of lump all of that together as the liberal agenda. That's pretty much it. So, like when I was a kid, autism was just a gender that doesn't exist, pretty much. was how they taught it to us. That was what So then it wasn't until I came out here that I first even realized, I was like, oh, maybe, maybe I am a little weird. Maybe there is something going on here. And that's when I realized that people also have not really wrong ideas about autism, they don't really seem to get it, you know? It's like, people understand it's a spectrum, they think it's more like a number line. You got Sheldon Cooper on one end and Rain Man on the other, and we all just sort of fall in between. But that's not true, that's all right, you know? Like, we're all unique, we're all special people. I have nothing in common with Andy's sister. <laughs> but I did, I met a woman one time who had the same diagnosis I did, but she also had the ability that if you told her your birthday, she could tell you what day of the week you were born. That's wild. So you'd be like, March 13th, 1985, that's a Saturday. Oh, May 19th, 1998, that's a Tuesday. September 11th, 2001, that's a day to remember. Good answer, sir. Oh, yeah, I saw you paying attention. That's a patriot right there. He knew. I saw it in your eyes. And the whole time I'm talking to her, I'm like, man, I, I can't do that. Like, what brand of vaccine did you get as a kid? You know what I mean? <laughs> Yours came with party tricks. Mine doesn't get invited. What happened here, dude? I know that's kind of a sad note to end on, but don't worry about it, okay? I wouldn't change anything about myself or about my life. I like who I am, and thanks to the diagnosis, that means I can look like this and yet technically still qualify for diversity scholarships, so it's not all bad. <laughs> a win is a win, is what I'm trying to say, all right? It definitely does rear its head sometimes, though. Like, there are just some things we do as a society that don't make any sense to me. Like, I'll be honest, whenever someone tells me the measurements of their baby... I have no idea what to do with that information. <laughs> like, why are you telling me your baby's stats? Are we trading toddlers later? What's the deal here? What's going on? I don't get it. I don't understand. And they're always so proud of it, too, you know? She's like, oh, little baby Jeremiah who's born. 10 pounds, 8 ounces, 11 inches long. It's like, damn, to the ounce? Like, <laughs> Freddy's cut with baking soda? What is the deal? What is the deal? 
You realize those measurements mean nothing to me. I don't have kids. A baby is a baby size. You know what I mean? You tell me something's 11 inches long, and I picture a subway foot long. That's what we're dealing with. That's where we're at. <laughs> it's not like I don't like kids either. Like I do. I think it'd be fun. I, I, I think it'd be fun to be a father someday. I do think it'd be cool. But that's not because I want to have a kid. That's because I want to do dad shit. Okay? <laughs> Hell yeah. Like I was driving down the street the other day, and I saw a billboard in front of a school that said Donuts with Dad next week. And I got a little bit of male baby fever. Because that's the type of dad that I'm going to be, right? Like, I'm not going to make him do sports. I'm not going to make him do theater. We're doing donuts with dad. That's the one. We're doing it, okay? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. That's a good father right there. Not yet, but someday. Honestly, like, I'm probably in a petition in the school board for more food with father events. I'm talking supper with the stepfather. Ribs with relatives. Fud ruckers. For motherfuck, maybe not that one. <laughs> Might leave that one off the billboard. But I tell you what, I'll become PTA president for ribs with relatives. Who's with me on that one, huh? Come on, Dad. You want ribs with your kids? All right, y'all, so keep that going for your host, Andy Benedetti. Get that going for It's incredible. Give him some love. Shout out to all the times you've seen so far. Back off, everybody. That was very nice. That was